have seen a long list of deadly crashes in Charleston County over the past few years, and they often end up with people in handcuffs. There's the recent case of the two college students who were hit and killed walking home in downtown Charleston. In that case, two different drivers face charges and accusations of hitting the women and driving off. And there is also the case from last year of a woman accused of driving drunk, uh, plowing into a golf cart carrying newlyweds on Folly Beach, killing the bride and injuring three other people. The cases, of course, have their differences, but several questions consistently appear. Will the defendants be given bond immediately after their arrest, and why or why not? Live Five's Katie Cameron investigates how magistrate judges make these decisions as part of their first step of the judicial process, and she breaks down the power these court officials have. Pictures, flowers, and stuffed animals surround a bright white cross that now sits on the curb of Morrison Drive in downtown Charleston. A memorial in honor of the two young women killed in a hit and run crash there in April. When those three words have told me that your daughter passed away, my heart just dropped. The two friends, 20 year old Lizzie Zito and Ariana Gamber, were walking in the bike lane near the on ramp of the Ravenel Bridge when Charleston police say they were hit not once but twice. First by Seth Carlson, and then 30 minutes later by Max Gentilin. Police say both men drove off, leaving the women to die. Your daughters hit by a car and then run over again. And to get that second news five days later is, is horrific. Both suspects were arrested. And at their bond hearings, the victims' families pleaded for the magistrate judge to deny bond and keep each defendant behind bars. I have the, um... deeply request that you recognize that there was no remorse. But the magistrate gave Gentilin a $300,000 bond and Carlson a $600,000 bond. These girls tragically died and they both left the scene. So that right there should be able to deny bond. Their case is not the only one that ended with people dead and suspects in handcuffs. And a Life 5 investigation finds that the bond decisions made for these types of defendants can vary drastically. I can take the same case and put it in front of 10 different judges and get 10 different outcomes. Earlier this month, this woman, Jeannie Polite, was arrested after state troopers say she hit a man with her car in Ladson after he'd been thrown off his motorcycle. Troopers say she then drove off and the motorcyclist died. Last year, this woman, Jamie Komorowski, was arrested after police say she drunkenly slammed into the back of a golf cart at Folly Beach, killing a bride and hurting three others, including the groom. Compared to Gentilin's $300,000 bond and Carlson's $600,000 bond, Polite was given a $150,000 bond and Komorowski was initially denied bond. It needs to be in an amount sufficient to ensure that the accused will return to court when they need to. What that amount is, it, it really depends on the factors of the case, uh, the background of the individual who's accused, and who that judge happens to be. Attorney Stephen Futerall says defendants are guaranteed the right to bail unless the case involves a life sentence, a capital offense, or a violent crime. Then a magistrate is allowed to deny bond. According to South Carolina law, the charges in these cases, DUI involving death and a hit and run involving death, do qualify as violent crimes. So the magistrate could have denied bond for all four defendants. But Futerall says magistrates weigh a variety of factors, a defendant's flight risk or potential danger to the community, as well as a victim's rights. And while state statutes guide magistrates, Futerall says a lot of the decision is left up to their discretion. A significant amount. And there's not necessarily consistency. Most of them will meet in the middle, sometimes not at all. It just depends. But stuck in the middle and grappling with this inconsistency, victims, as well as their families, who are trying to find a sense of justice and closure as they set up roadside memorials to honor their lost loved ones. I would take 100 ankle bracelets and 1,000 rap sheets to, to be able to hug my daughter. We can do anything to prevent future accidents like this to happen. We should do it. For Life 5 Investigates, I'm Katie Kamen.